You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. <coughs> so yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel. Y'all get exclusive access to our community Discord server and access to all upcoming future Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, those are exclusive to the Patreon. So let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's go. All right. <clears throat> I let it a long exhale and placed my face in my paws. I don't know what he meant when he said I watched him jerk off. What the hell is he talking about? I can hear the creaking of the seat across from me. Mike must be sitting down with us. I would take it as the highest compliment if someone was watching me beat off. I'm never leaving my room again. I'm assuming you youngins are also new to this dusky establishment. Is that right? Mike speaks in a sort of southern drawl cadence that's more by you than prairie. And if you ain't gonna drink that, kid, I'll gladly finish it for you. There you go. Perfect. Nailed it. I uncover my eyes, slowly reaching for the glass and uh, glass of auburn liquid and bringing it again to my lips. The second time doesn't hurt as much, and I manage to swallow another fourth without any, fe without any tears. Yeah, uh, this is a first time for me. How did you find out about this place? He crosses his arms, leaning back in his seat. The chair creaks in audible protest to his weight. I was about to ask the same thing of you. I was wondering what cute pups like you two would be doing in a place like this. Got a couple meetings down in Peyton, so I stopped by the casino for a few hours with the one-armed bandit. So I have one of them sex applications you download to your cell phones, right? Downloaded that all by yourself, did you? Jackson comments dryly. Heh, <laughs> well, I can't exactly get my nephew to help me with that one, now can I? You could, it'd just be very awkward, much like this whole night. Jackson's staring at the wood grain of the table, tracing it with his finger. Bit rough, yeah? Well, anyway, I was on this sex application, and this fella starts chatting me up. The huffy one I was just with. He was also s staying at the casino. He suggested we come down here for some fun, so I followed suit. The place was packed with Fennec folk earlier. They all went back there, though. He points toward the corner door. So this place is for gay guys, huh? That's most probably the case. That okay with you? A slight smile curls up on the edge of Mike's maw, and Dax is wrought to a brief stutter. Um, I, don't, I don't care, you know. You do you, I'll do me. Maybe I'll do you too, yeah? I, oh my god! Daxon looks like he's been slapped. His tail coiling inward. Mike just chuckles in a bassy rumble. Oh boy, that straightened your curls, didn't it? Did you download that all by yourself? Huh, you sassy little shit. My phone vibrates. Is that um, a hail from Tactical? Daxon says as if, it is as, if it, as if it is physically painful for him to utter those words. Mike's expression shifts, and he looks curiously at the salamander. I check my phone. It's from Flynn. Come to the smoke room, alone. Huh. The empty feeling that had taken hold of me seems to alleviate some, and is quickly replaced by a whole new sort of anxiety. So maybe he's not leaving me high and dry after all, but what the fuck is he doing? A hail from Tactical. It's a reference. I hold up my phone. Flynn wants to talk to me, I think? Never straightforward with him, is it? I didn't know kids still watch that Astra. What? Daxon's attention snaps so quickly back to Mike, it's almost comical. I'll be right back. You can text Carl or something and ask if he wants to come in. I push myself up to stand, realizing my legs feel kind of weak. I hadn't noticed much at the time, but they were shaking earlier, something fierce. There's a no-smoking sign hanging from the corner door. A little irony, I guess. With a low breath and a straightening of my shirt, I pull the handle and step inside. Oh, that's a... Damn, that's a good piece of art. My feet touch what feels like bare soil. With a quick check, I realize the floors are wood, just laden with a layer of dust, grime, and peanut shells. The smell of spilled beer, cigarettes, and sweat is a combination of the likes of which I've never smelt stronger. I turn, and Ryan's only a few feet in front of me, standing in the middle of the room with Casey. Uh, they're... fucking. Flynn's next to them, his shirt open and belt undone. Oh. Well, hey, oh, well, I mean, oh, that's a really good, damn, that's a good piece of art. You can't really tell what's going on, so, perfect. Is there anything I have to censor in this? Uh, probably not. I don't actually see anything other than a guy standing there in the corner. But he's still obscured by shadow, so, uh, maybe not. That is kind of, that is kind of blatant, so I might just, like, 
put something there. All right. The lights pulsate on and off at infrequent intervals. Everything goes from pitch black to lit up bright. And of course, there's not a window to be seen. Second, y'all. Water time. Ugh. Oh, there we go. That's the stuff. Okay. I hear ambient voices around me. A, descent, a decent amount of people are here, and most of them are completely naked. Flynn, behind Flynn, gay porn plays on a crooked-mounted television screen. Speakers and subwoofers rumble with a bassy drone of bizarre music. Silhouettes of people dance in a limp daze. The flickering lights make the shapes look like ragdolls flailing in stop motion. The lights begin to strobe red, and it's overpowering to the senses. Too much to bear. I grab the end of my tail, squinting through actual smoke. Flynn? My voice comes out more pathetic than I intended. The music's so intense I can't tell if I'm being loud or quiet. Ooh. Everything goes black again. I hear a clap and a cry, followed by a baritone voice. This is what you want. Did... Did Flynn say that? There's a glint in the darkness, and I know it's Flynn's eyes. He's not looking at me. His eyes may be aimed in my general direction, yet he's not actually... looking at me. But the guy behind him is... Ho! Oh, fuck yeah! Brian cranes his neck some, looking toward me with a big old grin. His long tongue hangs out the side of his ma. Oh hey, Chase! Come here! I've never been beckoned by a guy currently balls deep inside someone else, so I'm pretty hesitant to obey. Flynn turns away from the duo, facing me. His expression sort of reminds me of how he got when his aunt was talking to him in City Hall. His eyes are a little more open than usual. And his, jaw and his jowls are pulled back along the side of his snout to show his teeth. So, he showed up. Flynn, simply, Flynn, Flynn limply gestures to his surroundings right as Ryan bucks hard enough in Casey to elicit a loud moan. Casey curls their feet against Ryan's own, the only clothing still on their body being, stri being striped thigh-high fabric tights of some sort. Meanwhile, Ryan is still fully clothed aside from his red prick sticking out from his fly and into Casey. A small crowd is gathered at the left side of the room around something. I can't make out what, but there's more moaning in that direction as well. Flynn's attention seems solely, seems solely on me, despite everything happening around him. He's waiting on me to say something. I step forward, letting go of my tail. Suddenly, Casey grabs Flynn's shirt, nearly yanking him over. Y you, you now. Oh, God. Flynn blinks, turning to speak briefly to the Fennec. Just give me a minute. Play it cool. I dip my paws into my pocket, putting on the most lax posture I can manage. Wow, uh, must be a slow night? Flynn's eyes widen. It's as if an enormous weight had just fallen from his shoulders. A rare yet familiar wry smile crosses his muzzle. He turns back to me and saunters over, his heavy footfalls making the wood creak with each step. He places an elbow on my shoulder and moves to stand next to me. You can't keep your nose in your own business, you know that? Well, uh, I am a journalist. You too, uh, mm, gonna leave me hanging over here with isn't? Ryan rests his heavy chin on the cooing Casey's shoulder, Flynn and I, giving Flynn and I puppy eyes even as he bounces Casey on his crotch. You look like you got it covered. So you did leave that phone out for me to find it. Flynn rolls his head some, as if debating speaking further. Finally, he looks back down to me. Second, y'all, it is water time. Now let's keep going. All right. Didn't expect you to bring my fucking roommate. That was awkward as shit, and now I gotta deal with the fallout of all this when I get home. You're the one that accused him of watching you masturbate after making out in front of us. I'm pretty fucking sure he did, or at least someone was. He didn't seem like the kind of person to do that. And he never struck me as the sort of person who would be this cool with hanging around a fuck shop like this. Lean our backs against one of the walls near the entrance, looking around. Looking around, I notice that the clientele seems to mainly fall within two groups. Finnick natives and middle-aged men. Most of them look like generic dads, which makes Flynn's presence here all the more strange. What the hell even is this place, Flynn? I feel the gila's weight shift against me as he shrugs. Tits if I... Tits if I know. It's fucking something, though, ain't it? It's real. There's a flicker of a grin on Flynn's face before the lights come back on. It's, um, uh, real something, all right. Ryan showed me it a long while ago. It was so fucking gross. There was like four old-ass beavers with balls down to their knees rut in the corner. And you came back? Hey, this ain't fucking ritzy-ass Pueblo when there's 12 gay bars within 10 miles. 
Equipped with cheap beer and blowjob dispensers. You get bored. And lonely. Flynn grunts and I feel his weight on my shoulder intensify some. So, Ryan's your... friend? Flynn fidgets. The music gets loud for a moment so we don't speak. He's the friend that's not going to be leaving in three days, so he's the friend. A pang hits my chest as the reality of our situation dawns on me. I go quiet. I thought, fuck it, might as well get all the baggage out and show you what I'm apparently all about and shit. You're all about seedy sex clubs? Well, it's just, I can't exactly go telling anyone else in the group about this shit. Oh yeah, Jenna, I was out at a bar off the res and was fucking some of your people the other night. How are you doing? Wait, what? The res and was fucking some of your people the other night? How you're doing? What? I find myself snickering, though coughing a bit from the smoke. People smoking inside and the lack of adequate ventilation are making my eyes water. Good. God, she's already furious at you. TJ, do you know what's... Do you know what... TJ, do you know what sounding is? Because me and this bull guy did it last week and he had a cross necklace. Reminded me of you. Oh my god, what the fuck, Flynn? I laugh again, covering my crotch instinctively. No way, you don't actually do that, do you? The large gila harumps. I wasn't the one getting it in my dick, if that's what you're asking. I'm a lizard. We don't got big urethras. That's disgusting! Flynn tears a bit to himself. He doesn't usually laugh at his own jokes, and his tone is actually a bit sheepish. So, that's where my missing handheld stylus went. Nah, that was probably Carl. I used one of your parents' cantaloupes for getting off back in junior high, though. Don't remember if I threw it away or not. Again, that wry smile resurfaces. I can't say I've ever seen Flynn so damn beamy. I'm aghast, unsure whether he's being serious or not. Though, I might as well counter him. Uh-huh, you sure it wasn't one of the cucumbers? Nah, they weren't big enough for me. To my surprise, he reaches down and pats the front of his crotch, actually squeezing at the end. I have to bite my tongue to keep from letting out an eep. His large hand kneads at the front of his shorts, and I, f and I feel his thumb and forefinger start to fiddle with the button on the front. He's breathing heavy, the six-foot-seven lizard having to hunch down to brush his muzzle against my ear. I thought you said we weren't going to do this anymore. Well, musk shit, that was before you tracked me down across half the desert. That's a beyond thirst sort of situation. I'm real glad I was right about you. He closes his eyes, smelling my head fur. Leo used to do that. Let's do this. Oh yeah. That's James Bond music. Okay. Alright, one second, y'all. Water time. This is a sexy episode of Echo. Yeah, Flynn's Path has a lot of gay, a lot of gay sex in it. The lights go off and I push my paw against Flynn's soft spot. He gasps in his own raspy way. He nips at my ear, though never actually biting. Venom in his teeth and all that. I don't have a predator fetish or anything, but there's something about that danger, his largeness, the way he thinks he's right all the time. It makes me want to put him in his place. Flynn grasps my wrist, his gaze taking on a lurid quality. He tugs me along to a small corner of the room with a little lighting. A red patchwork curtain hangs from the ceiling. The fabric sways from a plethora of ground-mounted fans. It seemed to be in there to create some semblance of a breeze in the otherwise hot and stuffy environment. I lose track of where Ryan and Casey are, but their absence isn't exactly missed. Flynn turns, sitting on something that I can't exactly see. I grin, trying to show myself what passes for fangs. I mean, I'm an otter, so I'm technically part predator, right? The gila removes his shirt, never taking his eyes off me. I do the same, trying not to imagine the leering eyes and clustered grounds around us. This is for him, and him alone. I can hear him breathing, even with the music. He's practically panting. He wants it. He wants me. I step forward, reaching for him. That's when my foot catches something hard. I hit the ground like a sack of spuds. Pain shoots through my ribs and my whole torso is coated in what looks like a slurry of cigarette ash and peanut shells. It smells so much worse up close. I glance up. There's a raised platform that Flynn was resting on, and I must have tripped on the edge of it. As the light strobes scarlet, I see frame-like flashes of Flynn approaching, eyes wide and teeth gritted. Fuck! Are you okay? He just ate shit real hard. He seems to notice the spatters of filth on my front. Probably literally, too. I hear some chattering behind me from voices I don't recognize. I mentioned something about an otter. One of them laughs, another one of them moans. I try to ignore it. Ugh. Yeah, I I'm okay, I think? Flynn offers an orange splotched hand. I grasp it. I can still salvage this. I try to go for his soft spot again, but he takes my free paw in his. Next thing I know, I feel the warmth of his breath on my muzzle, and the familiar moistness of his maw meeting mine. Flynn worms his tongue into my mouth, and I bite on it gently. He rumbles, and I hear the, whir the audible flap of his large tail swatting the curtain. 
He still tastes like the cheese bread and beer from earlier. I can do this. I wriggle one of my free paws, grasping Flynn's. With some coaxing, with some coaxing, I bring it down to my groin. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks here too if you can, it always helps. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, y'all. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye